What's going on people? My name is Antoine, this is ATM Tech, and welcome to the channel. So there's a new PS2 emulator available for Android, so I've downloaded it and I'm testing it out so I can show you guys. So while I'm telling you all about it, I'll have some gameplay running in the background. So this emulator is called Ether SX2 and it's recently gone into an open beta. It had been in closed beta for a little while, but now it's available for anyone to download in the Google Play Store. And if you want to know how to get PS2 games running on your Android device, then stick around at the end and I'll show you how. So I'm going to be running this emulator on the Samsung Z Fold 3. It has a Snapdragon 888 processor, so I do expect pretty good performance out of it. So first up, we've got some Devil May Cry 2. This is definitely a game I put in a lot of hours back in the day on the PS2 console, and I'm just really impressed with how good it looks on this emulator. So this game is running extremely smoothly, playing at 100% speed, and it's locked at 50 frames. It is 50 frames rather than 60 frames because it's the PAL version. But nonetheless, the performance is fantastic and there's no drop frames whatsoever. So I'm moving on to some Tony Hawk's Underground. Again, I have no complaints with how this game plays. Load times are good, textures are good, performance is great. The Tony Hawk's games are a franchise I played the hell out of when I was younger. And playing it on this emulator feels just as good as a real thing. So as I mentioned before, this emulator is in beta, so it means it's not going to be perfect. And the first issue I came across was playing NBA Street. The game runs and loads just fine, but for some reason the players are, well, the players are shadows. I played around with the settings and tweaked quite a few things, but I just couldn't get the issue resolved. Hopefully it's something they can fix in the future. The last game we're going to look at is Max Payne, and to be honest, there's not really much to report. This game runs absolutely perfect. The game does have a slow motion mechanic that I thought the emulator might struggle with just a little bit, but it didn't miss a beat and it played absolutely fine. Honestly, considering how well this emulator is performing already, I'm really looking forward to playing more PS2 games on Android. So as promised, this is how you get PS2 games up and running on your Android device. So the first thing you want to do is go into the Play Store and search Ether SX2, one word, and it will come up in the search results. You want to click that and download it. Once it's downloaded, you want to open up the app and it will take you through a setup wizard. So the first page is just a general FAQ. If you're new to emulators, then it's worth taking a look. But if you're not, then you can just press next. So here you're going to choose your default settings. If you have a higher end Android device, you want to leave it on optimal. Whereas if you have a mid range to lower end device, you want to leave it on fast. So this page is important. This is where you import the BIOS. The BIOS is a really important file that the emulator needs to run games. If you don't know how to get a BIOS, then just Google it. It's really easy. So all you need to do is get the BIOS onto your phone and then choose the file location where the BIOS is saved and it will import it for you. Then once you've done that, you need to choose the folder location where you have your PS2 games saved onto your phone. If you don't know where to get games, again, Google it. So once you've chosen your folder location, you just want to press next. That completes the setup and on the next page, it will scan and show the list of all your games. So I played around with the emulator and a few things I noticed. One, it runs way better on OpenGL. Software is just slow and glitchy and I found with Vulkan it would crash quite often. So you definitely want to keep it on OpenGL for now. Who knows what updates will come in the future. And also when it comes to graphic settings and system settings, there's absolutely loads you can tweak. So the app developers have really gone to town with it. It's really impressive. 
So when I use emulators on Android phones, I normally use a Bluetooth PS4 controller, but you do have the option of on-screen controls, and you can actually switch between just a D-pad, single analog or dual analog, or you can just hide the on-screen display altogether. So this was just a quick video basically letting you guys know that this is out there. If you want me to go in a bit more depth or if there's any specific games that you want me to test, let me know in the comments down below. But for now, thanks for watching. Peace.